<clears throat> okay. this one time and then I'm not going to do it anymore, okay? okay? You have to hold on to it and pull it really hard. Okay. Really, really, really hard. Okay. And the bullets go in there. Okay. We will see if these boys... What, honey? He... Uh-oh. Just put them on the camera. No, he went back. We'll give it back later. Wait. We'll see if we can do this un <laughs> uninterruptedly. Okay, hey, Roman. Do you want to turn on the show for you guys? No, he went here. Oh my goodness. We've been kids, kids central over here today. Okay, so we're going to do the sheaf stitch. Um, so I was imagining, um, let me just pull up a photo. Hold on. Roman, you guys need to go into your room and play. Um, you know those like textured crystal vases? That's kind of what I'm imagining. Let me just pull up this photo real quick and I'll show you. So this is kind of what I'm imagining this vase is going to look like. So like this big one over here. So kind of this kind of texture is what I was kind of trying to go for. So, um... Now you know the inspiration behind, um, I was watching, um, gosh, what's her handle? Lemon Maid Shop. Um, she's been doing a quilt stitch along that's so cute. And she was doing the sheaf stitch and I was like, oh my gosh, would be perfect for this vase. So that's what we're going to do. I would like to show. Okay. Roman, can you get a show on the TV? Okay, grab your iPad and I can help you. Okay, so this is a sheaf stitch. is like this. Mommy, so I was kind of trying... Okay, you got to unplug it, buddy. After they get a show, I think they'll be quiet. So um, this is with three and then this is with five, which I think that this would work better if these end ones were looser. I pulled them too tight, so it's like puckering, which we don't want, so... Anyways, I think I'm going to do every other line just so it has a little bit of difference and you can kind of see that while we... Okay, come here. What? Let me get movies on for these guys. Hold on, guys. What? I would do... You would do Bobby? Okay. Take that into Roman's room. Here, give me this. I watch in the YouTube. No, let me. Yes, Tom. Hey, tell me. Okay, hey, go be quiet, please. Oh my goodness. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is draw some lines. I'm actually gonna take this back out of the hoop stand real quick so I can draw some straighter lines. Cause I want these to be horizontal. And I kind of want them all to be like the same um, like the same width, height, I don't know, whatever you want to. So this is going to leave like some gaps in our, um, like we'll be able to see the fabric, which I'm totally fine with. But if that's going to bug you, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So let's get going. So I'm going to use all six strands and I would say use all six, no matter what size your hoop is, just because, um, the stitches will then take up a little bit more space um, and fill that. You won't have as much negative space on your um, hoop or on your fabric. So I got a knot. Hold on. Let me unpick this real quick. Okay. 
Okay. Here we go. I'm not turning on the TV. You can watch a show on the iPad. Okay. So what we're going to do, let me just show you the difference here on this one. So this one, I did all of these are like an equal distance apart. And then this one, I like better because these two are right next to each other. So it felt like right here, there's a gap and right here, there's not. So, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm not on camera. So on this one, there's a gap between them and this one, there's not. So there's still like this space, but up at the top, there's not where there is right here. So what we're going to do, I like it better without the gaps. So let me show you how we're going to achieve that. So we're going to go and just do three parallel lines for each um, little bundle. And then we want these to be an equal distance apart. Oh my goodness. Let me turn my hoop a little. So we're just going to do a little bit of a gap and do our next stitch. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. We're using DMC 3364. That's the lighter green from the pattern. Okay. So we're going to go and do three of these that are all equal distance apart. Okay. And that's what's going to create. And you don't want to pull these too tight. They need to be a little bit loose so that we can like pull those edges over without puckering our fabric. Okay. So don't be like pulling these as tight as you can. Okay. So we've got three that are about equal apart. And then this next one, we're going to do like a satin stitch. We're going to go right next to it for our next set of three. Okay. So this first one is going to be really close, right next to it. And then we're going to do the other two a little further apart. So we're going to do a little bit of a gap. And then another one at a little bit of a gap. And then we're going to start our next three. So we're going to go and do this one really close. I don't think that's close enough. Hold on. And then these second two with the gap. Okay, and then this last one is only going to have two instead of three. So we're just, well, I mean, if you have space, then do three. But I'm going to do this one really close. And then the one on the end will be out a little bit, a little bit of a gap. Okay. So now we have all of our vertical lines. And now we're going to go bundle them. So I'm going to go back to the front. So these first three right here are what we're going to work with. So we're going to come up under this middle one. So can you see how I kind of pushed that out of the way and I'm coming up from under it? Okay. And then we're going to weave under this edge one. And then we're going to squeeze our needle in between these two which I know is going to be a little bit tricky but if you start like up above them and just slide your needle in there um I was going to show you one more thing hold on so on this so this one I've wrapped it and this one I didn't so as you can kind of see like this one's a little bit like fluffier it has more thread and this one's not Mom? what honey well, do. okay go ask dad about it so, um, you can either come, okay, honey, go potty. You don't need to ask for permission. Go on. Um, I'm sorry. 
Okay, so we are going to, you can either just go under this third one here and just go straight down back into that under the middle one. And that will create this one. Or you can weave under all three of them and squeeze them together and then go under. So that gives it a little bit of extra thread, a little bit of more bulk. Um, so depending on how you want it to look. So I think that that's actually a little bit too bulky. Like I don't, I don't love that. So I'm going to take that back out and do it the other way. Hold on, I gotta remember, figure out which one is which. So I'm just using the eye of my needle so I don't snag any threads, but then I can like pull this loose. Okay. So I think if this was a bigger area, we could probably wrap it and it would be fine. But since this space is so small, I think it's just creating too much. So I'm going to come onto this third and then I'm going to go under this middle one and like back in like right next to the hole that I came up in. Just get those together. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come up under this middle one. And then we're going to swing and go under weave under that one. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing my fabric up from the back, just with my finger, to kind of give it a little bit of extra space to weave under this one without snagging this one. So if you are concerned about that, you could also do these one at a time. Just do your three stitches and then bundle them and then move on to the next three and then bundle. I'm not super worried about snagging my threads, so I like this way better, but you can do one at a time if you need to. So we're just gonna come under that and go back down in the middle. Okay, and then we only have these two, so what we're gonna do is come up in the middle and it's just gonna pull this one into the middle and we won't have that third one so I'm just gonna come back down under there now if you feel like this is looking too crowded for you um, you could make the your lines a little bit bigger like make them up here and like or whatever you can do whatever you feel like is gonna work best. Okay, so what I wanna do is I want these bundles to go in between each other. So I want my middle one to be here. Okay, so I'm gonna start and do, this is where I want my middle to be on this next row. And then I'm gonna have a little bit of a gap And a little bit of a gap. So then I can have this one here. I think that will help fill the space a little bit more. Okay, does that make sense? So we'll go every other one. So. Stetson, what did I already say? I, but I told you, you can watch one on the iPad. I'm not turning one on the TV right now. Okay, take a rest. Okay, so I'm going to do that one right next to the other one. So I'm just doing the two again like I did over on this edge. 
Okay, so I'm going to come up in the middle of this one. And pull that one over. So I'm trying to pull, I don't want to pull this side one because it's supposed to be straight. So I'm just wanting to pull, kind of use my needle and like pull that over a little bit. Okay. And then when we're done with all of these stitches, then we can go and outline it. But I've got to fill up all this space first. What do we think? Are we excited about this stitch? Are we a little unsure? I'm excited. I think it's going to be a stinking cute vase. Love it. Yes. Excited. Yay. I can't wait to see your guys's. I can't wait to start seeing everyone else do theirs. That's one thing I love about stitch alongs is seeing everyone else. So like some people are following the color palette and some people are not and some people are adding little extras and some people are not i just think it's so fun to see everyone's creative process and how they want to interpret things so with this one you could do different colors you could do um the wrapping part in a different color than um like the vertical lines and then the wrapping in a different color. You could like pull out that darker green or something. Um, or you could do each row a different color. You could, if you have a bunch of different threads without running back to the store, um, you could do like an ombre. If you're gonna do that, I might um not do these so small but that could be really fun like i have all these ideas now of things that i want to do with this stitch because how stinking cute is it Those ones are a little bit tight. It's gonna pull my fabric a little. So yeah, here's your reminder. Don't pull these too tight. Do you guys want to watch me do this whole thing or should we do something else for a few minutes? Because we could do something else for a minute and then I'll finish this off camera and then we can outline it tomorrow on camera. sure what I'm gonna do look at this little tiny triangle okay also since I've been doing this 
Um, I think it's easier to bundle these one at a time. <laughs> so once you get working on this, this has been a little easier. Game for either. I've got the book ends to do tonight. Oh, yes. You were... Was it you? That said long and short is like not fun. I don't love long and short either. It's not my favorite stitch. Okay, so we're gonna pull that over. Do this one straight. Oh my gosh, I am just so excited. I think it's gonna be so cute. Your kryptonite. Yeah, it's not the most fun. Okay, well, I think I'll do. Mm, I don't know. No one else is speaking up, so I guess I'll just keep going. Um, so another idea, you could start out bigger and then slowly get smaller on your stitches. Just throwing out some ideas if you want to try out something. I always have all these ideas, like once I get stitching, I'm like, oh my gosh, we could do this or this or this or this. So don't mind me while I brain dump on all of you. Keep going, I'm just doing mine anyway. Okay, I'll keep going. Brie, I'm excited to see yours. I'm excited that you're just working on it with me. I like to do these middle ones first so that I know that they're in the middle. Mom? What, honey? What's up? No, you're not gonna sit by me with your show. It's too loud. Roman. Roman. Turn that off. Hey, Mom. look at me. And you want me to have a win, Mom? I gotta go turn off the TV. I know, sweetie, I'll turn it off. Hang on. Hold on. There's probably a proper way to do this. I'm just like stitching <laughs> at stitching at random here. I mean, I'm going from here to here and then here to here and here. Like, it's just, it's crazy. The back of this is gonna be real messy and I'm not worried about it. I was trying to think of other ways to use this stitch. I'm trying to decide. I mean, I think you could use it like, I don't know. I'm kind of liking it for a filling stitch though.
Okay, I gotta decide what to do in this little space. Just do a little stitch that just goes in to the center. I'm not gonna bundle those. I'm just gonna kind of make it look like it a little bit. Oh, I missed this. Whoop. Oh, it's not straight. I missed the edge. My head is feeling a little foggy today. Oof. I missed a piece. I didn't quite get under. Let me try that one again. Whoops. I'm tempted to satin stitch the bottom in one color and do this on top. You could do that. Like satin stitch like up to here or something and then do the rest. I still have to get another fabric so I don't throw a tantrum with my current fabric. <laughs> Lisa was having troubles. Her fabric was too tightly woven. It wouldn't pull her stitches through. But yeah, I think you could totally do that. Or even do like every other, like do some satin stitch and then some of this sheaf stitch and then satin and then sheaf. Like you could totally mix it up. Or if you really, really, really hate this stitch, you could also just satin stitch the whole thing. Like you could do some vertical and some horizontal to kind of give it some, oh shoot, where did I go down? Um, to give it like some texture. A cool looking stitch yeah I am excited about it oh I didn't grab all of that either my goodness okay I'm gonna leave that one though Yeah, looking back, I kind of wish I had made maybe like one less row, like made them slightly, slightly taller, but that's okay. That's what you get when you don't practice before you, I didn't make like a practice piece. I just think it's more fun to do it like this. Got Amanda in here too. All you people coming in late, you're gonna have plenty of time to watch me do all this. It's a little time consuming, but I think it's worth it. So fun. Sometimes it's worth it to do some stitches that take a little extra time. I've been trying to decide if I can ever teach bullion knots again. We did.
did them. I think it was July last year on their rainbow stitch along. Bullion knots are hard. There's no laughing, Lisa. <laughs> they are rough. They are, I think they've got to be my least favorite. I'm simply not a fan. You could barely get through that. I, it's true. <laughs> it was really hard. I didn't like it. I mean, they're fun. They're really fun. But if you're not practicing them, they are, they're pretty hard to just like wing it. Let Giselle's teach them. She's the pro. It's true. Giselle... When are you doing a stitch along and teaching us how to do bullion knots? She did a hair video. She was doing hair with bullion knots and it was so intricate, you guys. Like just crazy beautiful hair. I just don't have that kind of patience. I like things to move a little bit more quickly. Like this is taking a long time and it's like, okay, I'm ready to be done now. If I was doing this not on video, I would be scrolling through Instagram by now. Be like, I need, I need a break. <laughs> I'm laughing. It was me who suggested doing the bullion for the caterpillars. Oh, yeah. It was. It was a good suggestion. It was good. It just... Bullion knots are just... I think it's like French knots. You either love them or you hate them. Like, they're just... They're one of those stitches that is just like... It takes a lot of, like... You have to get the right tension and the right how many wraps you want to do and it, you really just need to practice them to be able to have like a good relationship with them they are tricky they're fun and they look so cool and like Kate has a stitch along a flower one that she does like a whole rose out of bullion knots and it is super cool but it's also, I mean, it's a lot of bullion knots. I'm going to run out of thread. I'm going to finish this row and then I'll grab a new piece. We're almost done. And then we can, and then we can outline this. Oh my gosh. It is so cute. Sorry, I'm on the edge a little. Let me tip this. Look at that back. Whoa. It's nuts. Don't save that scrap. You can throw that away. What, honey? You want to make cookie dough? Yeah, with dough. Well, I'm doing a class right now, and then we can make some cookies. You need to decide what kind you like, okay? Mm. Yep, you can help. I had two? Yep, but I got to finish my class first, okay? Go play for 10 more minutes. No. Okay, then sit there quietly for 10 minutes. Okay. We're almost done. Okay. So I'm going to start. 
What, honey? Are you done? No, I'm not done. Why don't you go get dressed? What? We like to stay in our pajamas for as long as possible. Like I'm still in mine. <laughs> Stitch along in your pajamas, people. I usually get dressed right before I go get the kids from school, which is closer to, I usually leave about 2.30. So... <laughs> What? Okay, well. His closet door is locked. <laughs> Judd, can you help him? Getting there, we're getting there. Oh, that one's a little bit crooked. But I think it will be okay. Your way hurt? Yeah. How come? My back. Your back is way hurt? No, my bum. Your bum is way hurt? In my day. And what? Can you have daddy go help you? No, don't be up. No, I'm not going to help right now. can't decide what to do up here. Maybe just, I'm trying to decide if I should do like two more of the sheaf stitches or if I should just satin stitch it. Winging it, people. Do we want to vote? What do we think, satin stitch? Or a sheaf, sheaf stitch. That's a hard word to say. Sheaf, sheaf stitch. Okay. So this is curved right here. So what I'm gonna do is this side over here, I'm just gonna come up into the middle where we're gonna wrap it instead of wrapping that third yeah. side. Because I think that will look better. like really want to mess with this stitch and get like I want to do like an ombre or something now Mommy, what honey are you done now? I'm not done now 
<laughs> We're not saying bye yet. No, I did. I did. I did that. You said hi to that? Oh, you see that on the video? I did bye and hi. You said bye and hi. Oh, man. I gotta pull that one out. hate that. I think threading needles is so annoying and I hate when I have to take something out and then re-thread my needle. He is so cute. He really, really wants to make cookie dough. He watches, does anyone know what word party is? It's like these little baby animals and they sing and they talk about being nice and I don't know every time he watches the episode where they eat cookies he then wants to make cookie dough what honey Are you done now? I, I am not done now Why? because I'm still working So on this curve, I'm going to do the same thing and do this one straight. Shoot. Let's see. There's not really enough room. Let me look at this again. Hold on. I need to move this over. Oh yeah, we totally... Lisa says she'd rather rather eat the dough. We totally eat the dough. Mommy? What, honey? Mommy? What? We're all here. What? We're dough. Well, the mountains. The mountains! And this is a bear, right? Yeah. That yeah, that's a bear. You guys just get the four-year-old commentary today. Okay, do one down here. When I'm done with my class, we can do cookie dough, you guys. I'm not done yet, buddy. It is hard to be patient. These curved edges are harder. Nobody voted on what to do with this top. I'm gonna continue on with the sheath stitch. One big one. That's what I was trying to decide, one or two. I don't know, I'm still gonna outline it, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh wait, we have to go under the middle one. I was trying to go over on the edge. Okay, I think maybe just one more. This is a long video for this stitch, guys. Okay, I'm gonna do the same 
as I did down below and just do a little oh wait because this is going to be the middle I'm going to go out to the edge and then I'll come up in this middle again Come on, needle. There we go. Okay, I think I'll just do the one big one. Let's see how that looks. That's cute. Okay, so I don't want to outline this in six strands because I think that it's a little bit thick for an outline. So I'm gonna tie this off and just pull out three strands. Okay, so this is how I do it. I just pull the three part there and then it will just untwist if you pull it slow enough okay so for outlining you can do tons of different things um, I'm just gonna back stitch this and then we've got other things to outline so we'll use some other methods later on if there's a different way that you like to outline things, then go for it. You can do whatever you want. So backstitch is just, um, your first one is gonna go just regular. And then because our needle went down here, then it's gotta come up somewhere else. So we went down here, so we're gonna go and backstitch now. So we're gonna come up here and move backwards and go down here. And then I, I tend to thread save. I don't, cause really if you're gonna keep backstitching, you should go here and then backstitch and then here and backstitch and here and backstitch. But I, don't like to do that. So since our needle went down here, I'm gonna come up in this same hole again and then go down here. And then my next one, I'll backstitch. So from here to here. So I just go every other one and it just saves a little bit of thread And you just want to keep these um, stitches kind of the same distance apart as you work your way down. Okay, so I'm going to skip outlining where these two are touching because I want to show like that this one is in front of this one. So when I stitch this part, it'll kind of even out that this section here. So I'm just gonna move my needle down here to the bottom and, and continue outlining there. You can outline the whole thing if that's gonna bug you, um, but this is technically behind. And so I don't think that we need to outline that edge where it's gonna bump up against the other stitches on that next one.
But yeah, super easy to outline. And a nice little back stitch. And I actually think there's most of this space like that we really don't, I mean, I guess after we erase the lines, it'll look different, but I was gonna say, you don't even really have to outline it. And then I'm just gonna leave all this negative space that was created here and stuff and just leave that because I think that it looks cool. Okay, there we go. That is it. We're done. We made it. Okay, so let me know how yours goes. And then make sure you share it. If you share it and tag me, then I can share it on my story so everyone else can see what you've been doing. So especially if you're doing something like different than what I've done, I, like, I really want to see it. If you're not... If you don't have a public account, then I won't see the tag, but you could message me and then I can share if you've done something else because I think that this one will be fun to see if anyone does things differently. So that texture is really cool. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. So anyways, thanks for hanging in there. This was a really long video, so I apologize, but it's fun anyways. So the other most requested um vase was this one so we'll do this one tomorrow um and then if we have time then we'll start this other little one um but otherwise we'll do let's see today's wednesday so thursday friday and then we'll for sure be able to move on a little bit after this one on friday do a little bit of something else because that one's so little but um we might do like the florals or something but anyways so come back tomorrow, same time, 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and we'll do this face over here. Okay, thanks. Bye, guys.